I'm really hoping I kill some guys with this with this missile. Oh my god. Hey guys, Sin here with a slightly more advanced Commander Mode tutorial. Commander Mode in Battlefield 4 can feel a lot like a real-time strategy game, but plays very differently. Being unable to control every action on the battlefield can make commanding feel powerless and sometimes stressful, but can also take a lot of weight off the commander's shoulders. Today we'll look at the support role of the commander and how you can find more success after you have figured out the basics. If you are new to commander mode in Battlefield 4, a link is provided in the description on how to play. Once you have the basics down for selecting squads, giving orders, and using your team assets, you may be wondering how to get more points. This guide will help you make the most of your position as commander. We'll be covering effective game modes, proper communication, managing squad assets, and some helpful tips and tricks. First, we'll find which game mode fits you the best. Picking the right game mode to fit your style is important to finding success. Each game mode has its own cadence and assets available, changing how the commander affects the battlefield. Finding the right pace and management style will help improve your score and experience as commander, and you might find you enjoy commanding on your least favorite mode. There are currently four game modes that support a commander. These include Conquest and Conquest Large, Obliteration, and Rush. Conquest and Conquest Large offer slower paced games and generally have a larger buffer of tickets than other game modes, providing you with some time to think between actions. These modes also offer you tools that you can use to directly affect what happens on the battlefield. These include vehicle and infantry scans, the gunship, and most importantly, the cruise missile. To use these, your team must obtain the designated control points on the map. Balancing control points is the primary goal in this game mode, and the tools offered by them make some points more demanding than others. This is a good game mode for those who enjoy asset management. Rush is a much more linear and faster paced game mode than Conquest, and does not offer assets that allow you to directly affect combat. However, its linear nature and dense combat areas allow you to rack up some insane amounts of points simply from the use of UAVs. Hence the name, Rush requires a commander who's quick on his feet and can manage troop placement and movements quickly. Don't forget about your evac order. It can help prevent a squad wipe on a heavily guarded MCOM. Even without the cruise missile at your disposal, this game mode can be a lot of fun and supports those who enjoy tactical assaults. Obliteration is like a mix between Capture the Flag and Rush, offering intense combat that can spark up anywhere on the map. Having the same, if not higher speed than Rush, Obliteration has the added bonus of the use of the cruise missile, and does not require a point to be controlled to use it. Commanding on this game mode combines the speed of Rush and point management of Conquest, requiring a strong defense and quick offense. Because of this, Obliteration can often prove to be a stressful gaming experience, but rewards you with a lot of points, and the cruise missile can rack you several kills. Oh my god. Next, we'll talk about communication. The primary function the commander serves his or her army is intelligence, and thanks to the voice over IP system DICE added to Battlefield 4, it makes it very easy to communicate to your squads. A microphone is highly recommended for commanding, as it's the fastest way to relay orders and enemy locations to squad leads. Any microphone will do. If you play on PC, you can find standing mics at your local electronics store for under $10. Open communication with other players creates a much more personal and trusting relationship than typing or simply giving orders, and you'll find squad leaders will be much more receptive to your commands. Yeah. Remember, when squad leaders uh, follow orders, you get points, and when you get points, you can help your squads. One hand washes the other. Not everyone is on comms in Battlefield, however, and you may find yourself running into a wall. Even if you're getting no response from squads, make sure you address them when you select the squad. This lets all the members of that squad know you're there and want to help. You may find people are more willing to play the game's objectives after talking to them and handing out promotions. Tell squad leaders when you're giving new orders and ask if they need a supply drop. Promote teamwork by recommending new loadouts for the squads. As the commander, you can see what kit each player is using in the squad you have selected. If everyone's an engineer, recommend a medic and support to keep the squad alive longer and resupply the remaining engineers with new rockets or mines. If you find a squad that can talk, you're set. Use them as your primary offensive force 
as they can give you up-to-date feedback over voice chat. As the saying goes, the best defense is a good offense. Help this squad first and foremost. Use your promotions and rapid deploy assets on them and use your UAVs to help them progress. This will net you more points than other squads. Place squad orders over clusters of nearby enemies so the squad leader can know where the enemy is even out of line of sight. If the squad leader accepts the orders, all of the members can see a waypoint where the enemy is hiding and take them by surprise. This works especially well in hardcore preset where there's no minimap to take advantage of the UAV scans. Cater to the squad's strengths. As infantry, they may benefit from frequent supply drops. If they are good in armor, give waypoints to enemy armor locations. Like your other squads, keep an eye on their kits. If they are dying a lot, it might be time for somebody to switch to medic. If none of your squads are on comms, or your main squad has been fully promoted, you will want to focus on managing your squad assets. Pay attention to objectives, and if you see squad leaders nearby, let them know you're promoting them and encourage them to defend or attack that objective. If you have rapid deploy available, look for a dead squad leader and give it to them so they can spawn back in quicker. Look for choke points or clusters of friendly soldiers and drop supplies nearby. Too close and you might kill the people you're trying to supply. This will net a lot of quick points and works especially well on rush. Some other helpful tips for being more successful or boost your points include marking high valued targets, disabling cruise missiles with the EMP UAV, and utilizing the new commander proxy attack. High valued targets can be hard to spot when you're busy commanding but net you and the player who kills them points based on their kill streak. They will show up on your map as a selectable unit once they reach a 6 kill streak and are valued at 10 points per kill, starting at 60 points. So keep an eye out for them. If you have marked an HVT recently, you will receive an audio notification letting you know it's available again. Let nearby squad leaders know there's an HVT marked on their heads up display and wager a squad promotion on their death. The EMP UAV is another useful tool with some interesting properties that most commanders don't know about. If you feel the enemy will be launching a cruise missile soon, save your EMP as it can disable enemy cruise missiles before it hits the target. If your team has the high ground and you don't want them to move, forget about the evac order, use the EMP. The proxy attack is a new addition to the commander's arsenal and very powerful at that. It will shut down the enemy commander's communications for 15 seconds, rendering them unable to give orders, use assets, and disables any assets that are currently online. I like to use the proxy attack in combination with a cruise missile attack, guaranteeing the cruise missile lands and possibly getting some kills. It can also be used to disable an enemy commander's attacks. I recommend everyone try Commander once in a while. It's a great way to experience the battlefield without worrying about your kill-death ratio or getting your head blown off by sniper fire. In most games I've played, even novice commanders are welcome and I have yet to see a squad mutiny. If you've had a couple of really bad rounds, or if your team is on a losing streak, hop in the commander position and try your hand. Playing first person shooters is not always about hand-eye coordination, but also exercising your mind. Display some adaptability and outthink the opponent. Until next time, spin out.